Right, so that's enough of them. Here's a box, which we ignored. We'll put that aside and ignore it again. Screw your box. And, as you can see, you've got six hard drive cages. A room for six hard drives in two different cages. This top one is removable via thumb screws. And each and every hard drive cage has, a, has this slideable tray, which has mounting holes for a 3.5 inch with anti-vibration things. And also for SSDs at 2.5 inch. Um, with every single one of these has the same mounting holes, which is great because not very many. Most cases that you can buy these days have one or maybe two slots for SSD. This has six. That's if you're going to use them all because this, as I said, this cage, top cage, is removable and rotatable. And also SSD is much more silent than HDD. Yeah, yeah SSD wouldn't vibrate, so they don't need the anti-vibration screws on them. I can get these off. They're just as tight as the rear case screw, which I needed to get a screwdriver out for. I'm not a lady. This top one here comes out. Um, this top hard drive cage is also rotatable. If I can figure out how it comes out, I'm fairly sure it will just slide out now. Very cool. There it is. And you can put it in sideways somehow. No, you can't. Yes, you can actually. You've got to rotate these though, which I'm not going to do. But that there's just so you can sh select your ultimate, your <coughs> preferred airflow. Like if you wanted to have air flowing that way over the hard drives, or if you wanted to have better cable management by having it this way. Mm, or fun. if you just wanted to have it out so you get more air in by this one fan here. Because look, the fan is now completely uncovered by that hard drive. You could probably take out these two rails if you didn't want to use it as well. And also that allows you to use, what was it, 30 something centimetres? Uh, 400 I think. Yeah, 40 centimetres of video card. There's no video cards this long, but I dread to see the day when they are. <laughs> With the hard drive ca cage installed it was 290 millimetres yeah. around that. Oh no, I think it was like 260. 260. Even. Alrighty, so in this bottom um, 5.2 inch bay there's also an adapter for a 3.5. Okay, if we move this all that aside... That could be useful. I could actually remove those when we install the... You need, to remove this bottom one, you have to tear the rivets out yeah. in the bottom. Which is possible. It's a very simple mod drop to remove rivets. Rivets? Rivets. Okay. And time for the other side of the coast. Unscrew <coughs> this side of the case. Hopefully this bottom one here... No, it's... <coughs> Right, so as you can see, this here's got the same thick, super duper smelly, awesome sound dampening material. If we put this over here, I should probably show you the other side of the case so I can point out that there's also sound dampening material on the top. No, there's not actually, but I know there is in the full size one. So this here might be based off the Define R2, which as you can see up in the top of the case, it only got the mod vent and doesn't have any here, which I don't know. Like I know on the Define R3 it has it there, and as you can see through there, that's what that fan cable is up to, being sneaky poking through the hole. Okay, because it looks like it wants all the fans to be plugged into the motherboard, although I'm sure that you could get an adapter. Back here, there is a lot of room for cable management. I don't know where my wall is going, but it goes pretty much up to my knuckle there, my first knuckle on my <laughs> finger. That's a terrible measurement thing, but I suppose it's better than a Linus arm span. <laughs> Back here, there's only two spots of these um, little cable management things, and two here, which is pretty much all you need because you get your um, you get your eight pin and route it up here, and maybe tie it off, put it through there. And there's there's more than enough room to route your twenty four pin back here. And I'd probably reroute these and bring them through here or something, so the power supply covers them up. And there's plenty, even more room back here and this little lip here that you can use for cable routing as well. So you're not going to go wrong with cable routing. Right, so that's enough at looking at the case without a um, system in it, without looking at the accessories. I forgot about these. Sorry about this. Everything. Wow, that's a lot of screws. So in this bag here we have an adapter for the front so we can have it to 3.5 for a floppy drive or something if you need that for some reason. In here we have screws and a hex key and some more screws. They're all black. Two really 
big chunky thick cable ties that I just dropped I'm, I'm sure somebody would use them and in here we have a fan controller for the rear fans because look it's got enough plugs for three fans and Molex and is that and temp probe and everything and a really big a really big <laughs> temperature knob that's massive well you need it because like that's that much in yeah that is actually see. really firing because that's where you put that so that's pretty good hopefully there's a nice spot that you can route that around the back so you can keep the cables tight right so let's put a system in this thing right so here's what the case looks like with a system in it as you can see it fits the d14 with easily and that's also with the mushkin ridgeback ram which you can't see on the camera if i bring the light around mushkin ridgeback ram so this fan here has to come up a little bit so this is about a little bit higher probably about maybe 70 millimeters so there's still plenty of room there for the d14 to fit this is a 285 gtx not the longest card and also not the shortest card but as you can see there's about yay amount <laughs> left so we, we took out both the hard drive cages using a rivet gun and then just like um ghetto mounted the ssd on top of the hard drive in an anti-vibration chamber right down the bottom it's all stuck together with double-sided tape the same strength that they used to hold card doors together so that that's not going anywhere we had to get a knife to take it off whenever we put this here in the wrong spot so we stabbed michael's hard drive problems with this was the grommets they're great like they're really loose but they also flap out all the time like um there's so many times whenever we were trying to put a cable through and then they just fall out and piss us off big time um so that was a pain in the ass like the bottom one and the one for the four pin which you can't see because it's hidden behind this bulk of hulk um they fell out like three or four times each and it was super annoying um you can probably notice in this area and around here cable management isn't the best standard but that's because um, my friend's actually planning on ditching this power supply maybe or maybe just edit modding the cables so we can get some million dollar PC cabling in and mod it up the only problem with modding these cables is these big bulky parts on the end of the um, the uh, video card cables I mean I don't know what's under there, it's probably just resistors and stuff to, or maybe it's just there to hold in the f extra f pins. Yeah. INTERRUPTED! <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it, we've talked about the cable. His management's actually pretty good with these grommets, except as you can see with the 24 pin that goes out the back and snakes around and goes there for some reason and comes up and around. That's the tightest turn that you can get this cable to do, it is that rigid. Maybe some better sleeving would, um, loosen it up a bit, you know, get it as loose as these grommets. <laughs> um, that's about it. That's what, it, as you can see, it fits all the important bits like a D14, infinitely big video cards, everything. That's the whole shebang of mine. And, bye.